I mentioned uh, that one problem with image description, image captioning, is that you don't have enough data. And why is that? Because you need human beings doing the labeling for the AI system. And once you show it enough examples, it's going to learn how to solve that problem on new images and try to describe them. This paper is all about data augmentation. It's a little bit technical. There are a lot of uh, pieces to the puzzle. And actually, two sessions of last year, we have spent discussing the details of this paper. And the video is online. You can watch it. But in terms of big picture, first of all, if you have enough data, you can train the algorithm from the previous slide. Take your image, vectorize it using the CNN, give that vector as the starting point, as the first token, or as the first vectorized token to your uh, LSTM, and then let the LSTM take over the rest of it. This is the beginning of the sentence, output straw, take a straw, output hat, mm -hmm. take hat, output end, and then the output is gonna be straw hat. So this is exactly the architecture from before. But you see a difference, and the difference is this image is actually a portion, it's a patch of a much bigger image. It means that you somehow found a way to augment your data. Out of a single image, you ended up with multiple patches. Now a single image is gonna turn into perhaps five images. Now your data set is five times bigger. The question is, how do you do that? All you have are data in the form of images and their corresponding text. And these are usually long text. And you have very few of them, very few in terms of training a deep neural network. And what you want to do is focus on portions of this image. For instance, this is a tabby cat. This is a laser mouse. This is a paw that's a black laptop. This is a wooden table. And this way, a single pair of input image output text is going to end up being five image portions or five image patches and five shorter sentences or sequence of words. In addition to the actual image and the corresponding text, you turn a single data point or a single pair of data points into six pairs of input output data. Now your data set is suddenly six times bigger. And then you can call this generative model, which is gonna generate the next word. But your entire task is take a pair of sentences and break it apart. Take a pair of image and sentence and break it apart into multiple ones. And for that, you need to embed two different things, two different entities into the same vector space. And then you can start comparing things together. You take your image, you embed it in a vector space. You take a sentence, you embed it in the same vector space. Now that you have two vectors living in the same space, you can compare them, perhaps using cosine similarity. And that's exactly what we are doing here. First of all, you have an image, and then you can call a bounding box prediction algorithm. For now, for this course, you can take something that is off the shelf. You don't need to open the black box of our CNN. In part one of the course, we actually open that and study how the algorithm actually works. But for now, you have a black box computer vision algorithm. It's going to take an image as an input, and it's going to tell you these are all the objects in that image, and these are the bounding boxes around them. That's how you turn a single image into three images. The entire thing is an image. This frisbee is another image. This dog is another image. And then you can take that, push this through your CNN, all three of them, and that's going to give you three vectorized versions of these regions, these image patches. Now a single image is going to give you three vectors. You do the same thing to this sentence. You have an input sentence. We know that the first step to vectorizing them is first you're going to tokenize them using a dictionary of words or subwords. Then you embed them using an embedding matrix, then you can call your favorite architecture, which could be transformer, which could be RNNs, or even CNNs. Whatever that you do, is you're going to end up with a sequence of vectors. This is actually what we have been doing so far for a major portion of this course. Then a sentence is going to be a sequence of vectors, an image is going to be a set of vectors. Then you can start comparing them. 
these, these vectors are going to have the same dimension. VI and ST are going to have the same dimension. So this is going to be S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. This is going to be V1, V2, V3. Now, for instance, you can compare V2 to S3 using their cosine similarity, and that's going to give you a single score here. And then you keep repeating that pattern for everything else. You have a matrix of scores. You take the maximum of these scores, you put them here, you sum them up, and that's going to give you a simple score that you can use to compare this image and this sentence. At the same time, you can compare this image to another sentence. So K is counting the image, L is counting sentences. Okay, perfect. So we learned how to represent images. We learned how to represent sentences. Then you can write down your alignment objective, which are these scores. They're just multiplying two vectors together. Then for each pair of sentence and image, you're gonna have a score. How similar is this image to that sentence? And then that's going to give you a matrix. What do I mean? You take a mini batch of data in the form of an image and a sentence. So you have pairs of images and sentences. This image is the most similar one to its corresponding sentence. And, it's going, and it has to be different from other sentences that are perhaps describing a dog doing something else. Out of that, you can create a matrix of the scores the similarity between this image and a sentence, similarity between this other image and another sentence. So the rows are images, the columns are gonna be sentences. It's gonna end up being a square matrix of scores where you're storing S. And what do you want out of those scores? You want the diagonal of those scores to dominate because that's the correct thing. You're matching the correct image to the correct sentence. And the off-diagonal terms, you want them to be dissimilar. And if they end up being similar, you want to penalize that in your objective function. And that's exactly what this objective function is doing. If one of the off-diagonal terms dominates the diagonal term by a margin, you're gonna penalize that. This has to be your loss. The same thing is here. If one of those off-diagonal terms is dominating the diagonal one, you have to penalize. And this way, the diagonal terms are going to have the highest score. Okay, so far so good. Is everything clear so far? I need to hear a couple of yeses. Okay, perfect. And uh, throughout this training process, while minimizing this loss, something interesting happens. You are learning vector representations for your words, and you're learning vector representations for these small regions in your image. Basically, you're learning your Vs, you're learning your Ss. Your Ss are going to be contextualized vector representations, which means that a single word, depending on the context, could have different meanings, like bank, depending on the context, could have different meanings as where you store your money or as where you, uh, as the river bank. And it's a similar story for your vector representations for your dogs. A dog in an image with a frisbee is gonna end up having a different representation from a dog in an image with a ball. So these vector representations depend on the context. But in the end of the day, you have vectors. Perfect. What can you do? Now that the training is done, you know these vectors, you want to associate portions of your image to portions of your text. You have a sentence with N words, like what you have here. You have an image with N bounding boxes, like this figure here, you're going to create some uh, alignment variables, which we are going to learn. And then what do you want to do? You want to align uh, each word here with one of these boxes. And how do you measure how similar they are to each other? You have vector representations for these pair of word and portion of your image. You can say how similar they are together. We know V, we know S, we know the vectors, what we are looking for are these I's and T's. You want to associate these indices to the indices in the image for those boxes. And we saw a similar formulation here when we were doing conditional random fields, when we were doing uh, uh, named entity recognition. That one was also associating indices together. If you forget about this term, you're associating each word 
to a box, but then at the same time, you want to uh, maintain some continuity. You want not only to associate tabby to this cat, to, the, to that portion of your image, you want to say tabby cat is leaning, is, actually, is associated to that portion of the image. So you want to maintain some continuity. And that's what you're going to put in your loss on in, in your energy function. You want 80 to be equal to 80 plus one. And then you minimize that with respect to these indices. And these indices are actually counting for each T. T is counting each one of these words. For instance, it's counting two here, or this leaps here is one of these Ts. And these A's are counting your, your boxes. You want to associate leap to one of these boxes, or perhaps multiple of them. That's the role of this minimization. And then the way that you're gonna solve it, it's gonna end up being a hard task. You're gonna break it apart into steps using dynamic programming. And then you're done. Now each image that goes in, you can take a look at portions of the text that your model thinks should be associated to that portion of the image. For instance, this man here, the bounding box for it, is associated according to the model to this portion of the text. That man in, in black shirt is standing. Now this portion of the image, in addition to this portion of your text, is additional data that you can use to train your multimodal RNN. Then it's gonna do impressive caption generations because it has seen more data. Any questions about the decoding part of this framework? Was everything clear? Now you're beginning to see the power of feature representations, of having good featureized images or featureized words or sentences. And this is the power. Before deep learning, people were actually taking an image and then do a lot of feature engineering on it. Perhaps shift the image to the right, subtract it from the original image. This is gonna give you gradients in the X direction. Look at the gradients in the Y direction, create a histogram out of those gradients. And then it's gonna give you histogram of oriented gradients. So people were spending a lot of time featureizing images that way. But with deep learning, you can actually feature, do feature learning. And it's all about coming up with these vectors. It's the same thing here. We have spent a lot of time going through different architectures, trying to vectorize our sequences of integers, which are basically tokenized text. But once you have vectors, you can start comparing things together in the vector space. You can compare the representation of a word to the representation of a portion of an image, look at the similarity between the two, and then try to associate them together. And that's the beauty.